Okay, so this is a demonstration on how to create a logo um, for the logo design project. So we're going to begin this project in Photoshop. So uh, Dakota has provided us with an example, and that's why it's important to do um, these concept sketches, right? Because when you have a client, you're going to ask them to go through a process like this. Hey, write down some ideas some, that, you, that you're looking for within your, 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 uh, your project here. So it looks like uh, Bob's chicken. Is that what we got going on here? Wings, maybe? Okay. Um, so we're going to start with a usable size. So we want something that's going to be uh, big enough that we can put on to like a t-shirt um, or, or something like that. But it has to be a high enough resolution. So we're going to do an eight by eight. So that's going to be a pretty big, we can always scale that down, but it's still a usable size. We're going to get really good definition with that. So file open, I'm sorry, file new. We get our new as dialog box here in just a second. There it goes. We're going to want to put in, so what we said, 8 by 8. And you're going to want to kind of um, cater this, these dimensions, this aspect ratio, to kind of the dimensions that you're working with. So if you have more of a um, landscape type of logo, it's going to be longer, you know, adjust it to accommodate that. Um, all right, so resolution 300 is good, RGB, that's fine. And we're going to do 8 bit, and then we're going to be working with a transparent background. All right, create. So now we've got a nice little square there. We'll zoom out just a little bit so we can see the whole thing here. Okay, so um, you kind of have some cool looking font in there, right? So this is one of the coolest things you're going to get out of this project is where can you get fonts from? Does anyone know? Font. Yeah. You ever use that before? Yeah. Okay. So we go to dafont.com. And this is also something you can do, have your clients do is, hey, go to defont.com, look at some of these fonts and see if there's anything that kind of jumps off the page at you. All right, so uh, Dakota, since you're my client, well, how would you describe that font? Looks like you got some like lightning type of hooks on the ends there. Let's take a look here. So. You like that first one? Okay, well that's just one option. Let's let's do another, no, we'll just download that. It doesn't cost us anything. These are all free, and this is what's really cool about this. Um, so we're just gonna download that package. There it went. Uh, let's do another search. How would you describe that? What's your vision of that font? All right, uh, let's try something like flashy. Nothing for flashy. Um, so that is a serif font. Let's see what we got for serifs. Ooh, too many. All right, go back. Let's do this. Okay, here's some recently added ones. So let's just kind of start there. There are literally, guys, thousands and thousands of fonts on here that you can choose from. And you can search them by alphabetical. So let's just choose a second option here, okay? So if you see something that kind of jumps off the page at you. Which one? They all start with A. This one or this one? Yeah. That one. Yeah, that kind of fits what you had on your, your, your uh, concept image. Okay, so now we've downloaded these zips. We have to install these into to, um, Photoshop. And the way that we do that is we actually are just going to reduce this. We have to have to close Photoshop. So we're just going to close this out real quick. File, save as. So this is going to be our project file. And we're going to call this uh, Bob's. Um, chicken wings. Wings logo. All right, save it as a Photoshop document for now. We're gonna put this on our desktop so we can easily find it. There we go. Save. 
Okay, the, the key step here is you actually actually have to close Photoshop to install these, okay? So we're just gonna close this out really fast, shut down, and we wanna make sure that we completely close it out. So we're gonna hit quit. See that little dot at the bottom of the screen? You might not be able to see it up on the board there. But that's indicating to me that it's still an uh, active running program. When that dot goes away, I now know that Photoshop is officially closed, okay? Good luck. Thank you. Or not good luck, have fun, I guess. <laughs> So we, all we have to do is unzip those downloads that we just did. So we go back to downloads here. Mm, where's downloads? Oop, don't know what that's about. Documents. Uh, mm, try this again. We don't want recent. Nope. Okay, we'll go this way. All right, double click here. It's gonna unzip the folder. There it is. Folder. Okay, now that we're in downloads, we just gotta go find those two folders we just unzipped. So that was the first one, right? And this is super complicated. You guys ready for this? Ready? Yeah. For the install? Okay. This is pay attention. You're gonna where it says tit the TTF file. And you're going to click on install font. Whew. That was so difficult. That's it. That's the whole process. Literally click on install font. Download it, open it, install font. That's it. And it's gonna give you all of these. So all of these options are in there for that font now. All right, we can close that out, go to the next one. I thought it started with an A. Let's see, there it is, is that it? Yep. All right, and then we find the, the uh, TTF file. Let's see here, there it is, TTF. Open it up, install font, done. So now when we go back, it, we relaunch um, Photoshop it will now have those as options for our fonts, which is really cool. So that's it, that's the whole process of installing a font. This is because we're projecting up on a screen. All right, then we're gonna go open up our, our project file here. There it is. All right, so those two fonts we were looking for, we go to our text tool here, and we put those in. The drop down box. Oh, spinning wheel of death. So there's the one we just installed. So Bob's. That's kind of cool. Kind of goes with your lightning theme of your concept, right? All right, so you had it all lowercase. Was that intentional? Okay. So we'll do the lowercase. And this is a cool little trick. If you highlight this and then you highlight the text up here, you can use your arrow keys to uh, make the text bigger or smaller so you can get an idea of exactly how it's gonna look with on the context of the page. So we're gonna make this nice and big because we want this to be recognizable from a distance, right? So we're gonna keep this simple. And We'll come back to colors in just a minute. Okay, so the next step is you have a chicken wing and what else is that on there? Like a dipping sauce? Okay, so we're gonna go do a little search here. We're gonna pull up, um, we want a chicken wing or, or drumstick, right? Chicken drumstick. Chicken. <laughs> Drumsticks, and we want that in a. So let's see. Let's do image search here. Specifically, we want a PNG of it. All right. So are you looking for something that's real life, or are you looking for something a little more animated? Animated. Okay. So let's. Uh, we'll do clip art. All right, you see anything on here that kind of... Uh, 
This one? Okay, so we want a PNG, and a PNG, so it's cut off on the top here, it looks like, so it's not going to be, I don't know if that's usable or not. Um, so that one's not going to work. Let's see, let's go down a little more. Okay, now, for if this was something we were using for like real life, you would want to have um, you would you would actually have to either draw this or take the actual image that you were going to use for something like this. Okay, we're just using this as an example, and right now I'm just trying to get a shape of a chicken wing. So let's kind of go. What about that one? That works. Okay, so we'll just use we're just like, using examples anyway. So you're gonna save the image. It's gonna put it back to our downloads. We'll put it on our desktop so it's easier to find. There we go. And then it's a JPEG image, which is fine. If you can get a PNG, that's a little better because it'll save you this next step, okay? And this will make sense in just a moment. So as a JPEG, what I'm going to get is this image with all of the white background behind it, right? We want this in a PNG where there's no background so I can uh, incorporate it into our design much better. So we're going to open up this in Photoshop. So file open. And we put it onto our desktop. So there it is. Open. All right, what's step one always? Can I Jay, make a du duplicate copy? And then I'm just gonna simply go up here to select color range. You guys have this skill in your toolbox already. So select the white. I can adjust the fuzziness to the level I want it to. That looks pretty good right there. And then I'm gonna click delete. So I've just removed, Command D, I've just removed the white background from this image, right? So now I can incorporate it into my design. If you're able to find a PNG shape, ahead of time, you can skip that step and just pull it right into your project. Now here's the really cool part, is we are going to make this into a brush just like we did with our signature watermarks. And remember how we did that? Yeah, we edit. 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 The fine brush preset. The fine brush preset, very good. And then we're just gonna call this uh, wing. And then click OK. Now, when I have my brush up, I now have a a brush of that. I could use this if I wanted to as well, but if I just kind of looking kind of for the shape, um, I can now use this within my, my project. So as I'm using the brush here, it's awfully small, let's make it a little bigger. I can go in and I can use some options. So if I hit this drop down box, see this right here? I can go in and this will allow me to rotate. So right now it's kind of going angle like this um, in your image you have it kind of going sideways so let's see if we go like that there we go bring it up just a little more I can rotate it that way so that's kind of what it looks like on your, your concept image and I can click and make it any color I want white's probably not going to work for this example so let's go ahead and do um, you want like an orange brown No opacity is not very high. That's a couple clicks to make it darker. There we go. All right, and then the next piece would be to add the dipping sauce, right? All right, so let's go get go back and we're gonna grab a, a dipping sauce. So that same exact process. I'm just gonna fly through it really fast here. Oop, typo. How about that one? And we can play with this a little bit. So this one has like lines running through it. You see that? Okay, so we can still work with that though. Save image as. Desktop. Go open it up here. So file open. All right, Command J. I'm going, this time I'm gonna do the inverse though. So select color range. I'm gonna choose the black because I know that there's some sort of protection lines on there, right? So select color range, black, I'm gonna max it out. And then I'm gonna go to select inverse. 
and then delete. And just to further uh, make sure that, because what's going to happen here, I think, is if I mix to a brush, it's going to record those lines. You see those lines that are in there? I don't want those. So I'm just going to grab my magic wand tool here really fast. I'm just going to grab everything on the outside there. Actually, let's do the uh, quick selection tool. I'm going to run that around the outside here. Get all that, because I don't want that in my project. Ooh, what happened there? All right, so image, file, edit, define brush preset. I can either do the define brush preset or I can literally just grab it and I can pull it into my project, just like this. Nope, not that one. Let's close that one out. There we go. Resize it. Okay, so Dakota, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna be honest here. I don't know if the dipping sauce works with it, right? It doesn't really fit with with everything. It actually kind of looks cool. It's really this is just kind of simple, right? We can work with this. So kind of using the concepts that we learned. Um, now we can add some of these elements art principal design to kind of jazz this up a little bit. So do you like the Bob's font color? It's okay. Okay, so let's let's play with this a little bit. So let's go ahead and add some effects. So we want to limit these though, but a little bit's good, right? So we're gonna click here. Let's try, let's see what a bevel and a boss looks like to the text. Let's see here. We want a inner bevel. We want lots of depth. Oh, which one are we working on here? Cancel. Okay, making sure we had the right one. All right, bevel. Normal. All right, smooth, chiseled, hard. I don't know. Everything's a little bit. Oh, that's why. Not loving that. Okay. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and uh, let's change the color a little bit. Let's so let's make it match colors. Okay. So I'm just gonna grab my uh, background color here. Click on that, and then I'm going to use my text tool, highlight it, and then just flip these two. Bam, done. And let's add a quick drop shadow to it. Don't like that. Not what I wanted. Obviously, red's probably not going to be what we want, so let's change that to black so it kind of jumps off the page a little bit. Create a little distance between it. Maybe so it's underneath. Okay, so as it is right now, how many colors do we have? Two colors. So when you get this printed, you're gonna have to pay for two colors. Um, so let's, um, we're gonna merge these into one. So what do you think, you like this? Okay, so let's just add one more element to kind of bring it all together, okay? Whenever you have usable shapes or lines within your project, try to use those things. So we're gonna add a, a square shape to this um, just to kind of bring it all together. So I'm just gonna grab my marquee tool here and I'm going to just bring the dimensions of the box. We're going to move this around in a second, though. Okay. I'm going to put this onto a new layer by itself. We're going to put it underneath everything. And I'm going to fill that with this color. So um, edit fill. And we're going to use our foreground color, which is fine. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Now I'm going to, again, use my marquee tool. So Command D. And I'm going to bring this a little smaller, but I want to keep the dimensions 
What a nice, good looking square here. All right, now I'm just gonna hit delete. So now I have a nice little bounding box, which this looks okay. Let's bring it in just a little bit and see what we can do with this. So we're just gonna make this a little smaller. So I'm just gonna hold down shift so I keep my aspect ratio the same. And then I'm gonna grab an eraser and let's get a nice round hard edge shape here, not that big. Using my bracket key to change the size. And I'm just going to remove a little bit here, move a little here. Maybe not that much, go back to that. How about here? There we go. So, what do you think of that? All right, so let's add that same drop shadow so it's consistent to the chicken wing here. So it looks like too much on that. So let's bring that down a little bit. So by sliding this over a little bit, I can actually see, so we bring the distance down. I just want to kind of separate it from the background just a little bit. Okay, so Bob's. What is Bob selling? Is that what you're is that what you're trying to sell? So that makes sense, right? The logo is appropriate for the brand that you're trying to create. Is this easily recognizable? Does this look like something you could use within your business? Okay, how long did that take? Yeah, and that's what that's talking through the process, right? For a client, you would normally make three to five versions. So based off of that sketch, I would go through it. I would tweak and do different things. Maybe try a different chicken wing, try different fonts. Um, so let's just add one more font. We're gonna use your alternative font here to just take it one step further. So what was the maximum amount of, amount of fonts you should use in your projects? Two, right? But most of the time it said it recommended one. But we're gonna add that second one just to kind of add that second element here, okay? So we're gonna grab our text tool here. And that second font was, ooh, what was the name of that? Start with a C, I think. It's one of these. Didn't start with a C. Let's go back and look. All right, we want. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't let me see my uh, downloads. It's kind of annoying. Well, that's silly. I can't reach my downloads. Let's see here. Well, what was the name of that font? We just got to find that. It was lightning. I know. I think that was it. But we'll look. No. I'm pretty sure it's sharp to see. Obviously, armed with that information, it's going a little faster, right? Super annoying. Let me see. Let's try one more thing here. Um, no, let's go back to the font. Right. That's what I'm gonna do. Isn't that it? Oh, it was lightning. Maybe we just didn't install that one correctly.
All right, it's not a problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna save, file, save as. We're gonna go back and reinstall that font. It's not showing up here. That's fine. And that's the beauty of uh, working with those is uh, it will go really quick to reinstall it. All right, so I'm gonna re-download. Yeah, I think I installed the different font last time is what happened. Not a problem. All right, so there's our font, obviously. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a secondary font. We're gonna make it much smaller. And we're just going to uh, just take this one step further and identify what we're selling here, right? We're selling wings. All right, now maybe that's not the best choice of font because it's kind of lost, right? So let's maybe look at some other quick options here. If we want something that's gonna kind of contrast but also at the same time complement. So again, like we did with our fonts, we can, uh, or our font size, we can go in here and we can highlight this and by hitting the down key, I can look at different fonts and how they would look. So we just did. So we could create contrast. We have something kind of blocky, right? And go with something a little more scripty. So like cursive looking or something that looks like handwriting a little more. What do you think of that one? Okay. As you can see, you get a whole bunch of options. The more fonts you have in your system, the more you can kind of choose. How about that one for now? Let's use this as an example. Okay, so that's a little easier to see. We can kind of place that in there. So just going a step further, identifying for our clients, for our, you know, our. Uh, our base, kind of what we're going for here. So let's kind of tweak this up a little more. There we go. All right, so now we have our, our logo. So we're gonna save this in multiple ways. You're gonna be turning in three types of files, right? So the first one we're gonna save is a PNG. The PNG is not gonna have a background. So this is something you could put onto a t-shirt, onto a website, um, something like that. So um, file, save as, and it's just a process of going through and saving these in these different formats. And this is what you're gonna be, the final product you're gonna be delivering to your client. When you're showing them the concept images, like the first like maybe three or four ideas that you come up with, you just gotta send them a JPEG, right? This is just for them to look at. You don't have to go through and save. The final product is gonna get this treatment. So we're gonna save, of course, we wanna save it as a Photoshop document, right? Because that way we can go in and tweak, because and, Dakota may come and say, you know, I really don't like it the way Wings looks. Can we try a different font there? Yeah, you know, but, but if I don't save my PSD, I can't do that, right? I gotta start from scratch, and I'm probably not gonna get the exact same result, right? So save your PSD, and then we're gonna save again. And we're gonna save it now as a JPEG. And, and quality 12. And then file, save as one more time. And this time we're gonna change that, um, we're gonna do a JPEG again, but we're gonna change the quality to, oh, cancel. So we'll call this one, um, I should have put that in the last one. So this one's going to be low res. 
So this would be something that you might use um, for online applications, right? You want a page to load really fast, right? You don't want a long time to load that image. So use a smaller size image. So we're gonna give this a, a web size. Um, so we're just gonna give it low. So that's gonna bring it all the way down to a three. So this is just gonna be something that's gonna be really small, right? If we scale this down, are we still gonna be able to identify its branding? Pretty easily, right? Okay, so now we got our two JPEGs, we got our PSD, we're gonna save it in a PNG as well, so save as a third time. And then save. Okay, this is important though. Whenever you save a PNG file, you have to make sure that this interlacing box is checked here. What this is, if I don't do this, it's gonna add a white background to it. We don't want that. We wanna have it to where it's, it's no background, right? So you gotta make sure that is clicked. Click OK. And then one more time. Let's see here. You could, you could offer a PDF version if you want. The idea is to get it to your client in as many vari variations as you can. Um, that last one though is this one, a Photoshop EPS, okay? This is a v converting it from a pixeled type of image into a vector image, okay? And then we click save. And it's gonna ask you all this information. Um, usually just go with include vector data, that should be fine. Um, yep, so it's just telling you it's gonna raster size your layers when you do this. So it's essentially converting everything into a shape layer. All right, from here, you're gonna want to then um, so this is a Photoshop EPS, but we, to make this a true vector file, we have to put this into Adobe Illustrator and it includes this final step, okay? So we have to open it up in our applications. We're gonna go to Adobe Illustrator. Let's see, right there, it's this orange looking one. And all we're gonna do here is we're gonna open this up in Illustrator, we're gonna save it as a, as a true EPS file, and then you're done, the project's done. But you're gonna be doing this process for two separate logos, and you're gonna have Monday and Tuesday of next week to do this, okay? So your homework for the weekend is to go home and start looking online and start collecting these resources. If you walk in the door with your, with your PNG files and things ready to go, um, and maybe look at some fonts, you can fly through these, okay? But you're probably gonna need the full time each class period to knock these out, okay? So do yourself a favor and don't wait until Monday to put all these things together, okay? So all we would do in, in Illustrator here is save it as a EPS file, so, and then you're done. Any questions? I'll give that to you, but you still have to create two. You like that? All right, so quick time. All right, thanks for watching.